Steve Levitt, welcome to the show. Um, maybe you can introduce yourself to the people who don't know you. Sure. My name is Steve Levitt. I work uh, in Atlanta, Georgia for Rollins Incorporated, which is a parent company for many, many brands, most widely known as Orkin um, in North America, but uh, brands throughout the world. We've got presence in Australia, um, Singapore, the UK, and then Orkin franchises throughout the rest of the world. Yeah. Speaking about the rest of the world and franchises, Steve, I know you have an M&A strategy and you just recently purchased Admus Pest Control, one of the most important brands down there in uh, Australia. Uh, congrats on that, by the way. Maybe you want to uh, talk to the folks about your uh, M&A strategy in general. Yeah. Uh, so that's a great question. And we're so tickled to have a relationship with Adams and be able to partner with them. You know, they're based out of, uh, well, they've got two locations, but primarily out of Victoria and Melbourne. But then they also have a fairly decent sized operation in Adelaide, which is Southern Australia. So they're a great member to our team. We're so excited to have them. And the strategy really, Daniel, is um, not so much where we want to be, but who we want to be. Uh, so as we work in these industries and as we move into these new markets, um, we start to gain relationships with all sorts of different um, you know, members of our industry through associations and conferences and things. And as we start to see kindred spirits, people who have got a very similar culture to us, that's when we get interested. We're not really buying a market, we're buying a culture. And it's, uh, it's really, really important to us that we find somebody who's got, you know, kind of like-mindedness as Rollins. And you told me earlier that, that quality is your main metric, right? Yes, absolutely. And I'll give you an example of how it works. But take Adams, for example. Um, we, we had partnered with a company in the Bay Area of California, west coast of the United States, um, Bay, mainly out of San Francisco, a really good, strong company called Crane. And Crane was owned by the Steins. And Mr. Hal and Ms. Vera Stein um, were very, very dear friends with John and Cecily Adams. And so when you've got a relationship outside of business that can also help act as a promoter, to this merge of Adams and Rollins. It just makes it all the better. But you've also got a reference where you can go to Hal Stein and Vera Stein and say, tell us a little bit about these folks and, and, and who they really are. And in this case, their relationship was so close that the companies are mirror images of each other. Crane is just Adams only in San Francisco. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a perfect fit. And I think the complex it sounds from uh, the outside world, basically, I think when you're actually in that position, I think uh, M&A on that scale that you're doing and performing it successfully internationally is actually only being done, uh, like a deal is only being done when it's easy, right? It needs to feel easy incrementally, right? Well, that's right. Absolutely. And, you know, another thing that people, we all know, we in the industry all know, because I started at the very, you know, very, very entry level, right, as a technician. And as a technician in my, my first market or as a manager in my second market or whatever, I knew who in my industry was good and I know who was not good. And because I knew the companies that I, I couldn't pry a customer away from them. And then I knew the ones that would just run from them to me. And so that, that local knowledge, that boots on the street kind of knowledge, you cannot, um, you can't pay for that. It's just invaluable. And so as we, as we, you know, grow more and more in Australia or more and more in Canada, you're getting, you know, more and more knowledge of other good operators out there that you want to reach out. And, you know, if it's nothing other than just helping each other get better through benchmarking, but start having a good relationship. Because ultimately, we all represent the industry. And a bad player in our industry hurts everybody. Yeah. I think there's a lot of legacy in, in the pest control world, a lot of street credibility, which I know that your brand uh, definitely managed to keep a very positive uh, result on. So, um, But the next yeah. one, my next question will be, and I think a lot of people will be interested in learning is, how did you manage the, 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 the COVID scenario? And how did COVID hit you? And how did it change your daily business and affect your your brands? Well, so we, we're finding that the, the commercial side of the business, which is largely what we are outside of the U.S. Um, U.S. has a very strong residential market. Um, yeah. Australia has a decent residential market, but most of Europe, most of Canada, it's largely what we call commercial or, or, or mm. business-related um, services. That's the one that got hit the most. Uh, how we felt it the most was travel pretty much stopped, mm -hmm. whether it was domestic travel or international travel. So we had to quickly lean on technology 
um, to, uh, to keep in communication. Um, the first thing we wanted to do uh, was create a really robust stream to provide PPEs um, right. um, to, to, to everybody and make sure that they had all of that, make sure that their people are safe. So we had to create a reporting process to make sure that as people were becoming infected or getting tested or exposed, that we were made aware of it and we could, you know, we had to change some policies to make sure that people weren't financially hurt um, or, or at least we could minimize the financial impact on them um, or other things that we had to do. And then ultimately, um, you had to change some things about yourself personally. Um, I, I found myself having to lean much more on effective questions um, and, and the ability to ask the right questions at the right time versus just relying so much on me being with you and, and seeing body language and observing. Um, I had to really, really listen better. <laughs> Interesting that you said it because it's it's a very complex uh, incremental process that it's being applied on on a big corporate like yourselves. And you yeah. said earlier in our discussion that you have a lot of trust in your team and your employees. And I mean, I really feel that from every single direction of your company. So that's really good to hear because I think there's a lot of young people out there that are now looking for jobs at uh, stable and and you know um, businesses that are still are thriving still during COVID, where a lot of bars and shops are closing and looking at pest control. And I think listening to how you um, perform leadership is uh, yeah, uh, quite impressing and inspiring to a lot of young folks out there. Do you get a lot of new um, people, people applying to pest control uh, to the Rollins brand? Is, is, there a, is there a curve to be seen? You know, we typically see the curve is when the economy is, is hurting. Yeah. We get a lot more traffic coming to us because our industry, forget the company itself, the industry, is pretty resilient. It's not dynamic, right? And it's definitely not what they would say sexy. Uh, you know, nobody grows up going, I'm going to be a pest controller. Um, but the, the reality is it's really, really stable and strong and reliable, right? Mm. So that's typically when, in fact, I've, I've probably had more Zoom interviews in the last mm. four yeah. months, or four weeks, I'm sorry, four weeks, than I have in the last four months. Yeah, agreed. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. It cool. changes yet. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Steve, thank you so much for the brief interview and thank you for agreeing to revisit our, revisit our show and being a, a regular. Absolutely. Management. We look forward. Absolutely, Daniel. It was great seeing you again and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. You too. Take All care. Right.